Wrestling fans, hello Friday. Welcome to another coronavirus-inspired Flashback Friday. Hope all is as well as can be expected wherever you may be. Everyone's looking for answers, and it seems like all we have are questions. We're ready for live wrestling. We're ready for in-studio shoot interviews galore, but it has to be done with everyone's health and safety in mind. We've had to hit the pause button on a big spring, but we're still happy to be bringing you brand new podcast-style episodes of Wrestling Insiders with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas, daily New England wrestling history videos, along with our new Flashback Friday initiative where we go into the Boston Wrestling Sports studio shoot interview archives and hear stories from the legends themselves. Yesterday was the birthday of the late, great Owen Hart. It reminded me of a few personal experiences and the story our own beloved President Paul Bearer told during his studio shoot interview taping with us. His thoughts on how hard it is when we lose a member of the Brotherhood when you're in professional wrestling. Bearer was part of the main event in Kansas City at the WWE Over the Edge pay-per-view back in May 1999, the night Owen passed away. This week's Flashback Friday will pull on the strings of your heart. There's our sisters. It's just disastrous. We all know them, we work with them, we travel with them, we've been in each other's homes. We know their children, we know their wives. We're family. You know, we were losing a part of us. Right. Sorry, sound man. We were losing, I just knocked the hell out of my microphone. So we, 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 we were losing, we lose a part of us every time somebody passes away. These are our brothers. You know, and it was very, very sad and, and had a, a t- terrible effect uh, you know, on uh, God, and, and I'm having a memory right now. Uh, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but just to explain the point, the night Owen Hart died, God rest his soul, uh, one of the finest athletes, performers, gentlemen that's ever walked the face of this earth with Owen Hart. I, I have such a respect for the Hart family and, and the whole family from Stu and Helen, all the kids. Owen was such a fantastic guy, one of the funniest guys in, in the business, with, with, without a doubt. The night Owen passed away in Kansas City, uh, Undertaker was wrestling Stone Cold Steve Austin in the main event, and of course I was at his side. We were in the dressing room backstage talking about our match, just me, Undertaker, Steve Austin by ourselves. And the, the, the show's going on. It's a pay-per-view. Everybody knows the story. Everybody knows what happened. So I don't need to go into any details. Uh, all of a sudden, the door, a door opened into the dressing room, and it was JBL, your dear friend John Bradshaw, Layfield. He stuck his head in the door, and he, was, he said, Owen just fell, and we don't think he's going to make it. And me and Taker in, in, in Austin, we just, just like us, we just... Need, nobody got up. None of the other three. It, it would almost be like a natural that you would want to get, jump up and run and see. And it, we didn't get up. It was just, we didn't want to see what was going on. And, and all y'all were watching this on tape, on, on pay-per-view, or on ta- later on tape, what was going on when Jim Ross made the announcement that they had a tragic accident, what went on and everything. And uh, so uh, it seemed like it was a long time, but it, it was by the time that, that we decided to get up and, and go check on things, it probably was about 15 minutes. And as we walked through the hallways of the, of the uh, auditorium there in Kansas City and came around to the back, I could see the ambulance. Uh, Jeff Jarrett got in the ambulance uh, with him and rode with him to the hospital. I could see the ambulance pulling away from, from Kansas City. And I have never, ever experienced the emotion, the feeling, the, the atmosphere backstage amongst the boys, amongst the family, uh, from Vince on down, you know, to the, the guys that put up the ring. Uh, because I, I didn't see Owen at that time. Like I said, we didn't get up to go see. So I, I didn't see what condition mm-hmm. he was in or anything. But a lot of the other guys did because they were there when they were wheeling him out the back. Mm-hmm. But we were main, main event that night. And, and, and Vince took so much heat. Why didn't you end the show? You know, 
and, and, and it feels funny to say this in the entertainment business because you hear this and the show must go on, the show must go on. You, you're always, this always pounded into you. The show must go on no matter what happens, you, you know. Who would ever expect some, some tragedy, some horrible, horrible thing to happen like that? Nobody. Nobody. And, and Vince took so much heat and so much stuff said about him, and they still talk about him today, that certainly was not deserved. Uh, safety has always been a number one factor on anything that we've ever done. Anything? He's done some of the stunts, like the Michaels thing at WrestleMania when he yeah, flew in. I, and yeah, I, I, I hung in a cage from the roof of the MSG, Madison. MSG, Survivor Series 96. Madison yeah. Square Gardens uh, in a cage, and I never had second thoughts about, you know, even the mechanics of, of what we did going wrong. But back to what I was saying, uh, just the, f the, the feeling, guys, big athletes, professionals, tough guys, you know, crying like babies, and just the feeling, there was never a question, should the show go on? It was just, the show should go on. We knew that, uh, that it was, there wasn't a question for it. It, it, we knew, it was just a given that you know, Owen would want it to go on. Without a, without a doubt, Owen definitely would want it to go on. Anyway, we were the main event uh, that night. Uh, I was managing Undertaker against Steve Austin, and I was thinking, God, Lord, how am we going to get through this, you know? And I kept telling myself, don't look up, don't look up. So during our entrance, we're making our entrance with the lights and the Undertaker music and all that, and I'm carrying my urn, and, and I can't. And yeah, there's no way I could help but look up. And all I could think about is how, how far he fell. You know, and then as an after fact, I had people telling me that they heard him screaming when he was falling. They could hear him screaming all the way down. They heard his screams. So we were standing, I was standing in the same corner where he fell. And uh, there was blood on the mat. Owen's blood was on the mat, and here we are, being professionals. The show must go on and do what we did. But that's just, I had to tell that story to kind of follow up to your question, mm -hmm. how, how, how we feel, that I don't care, you know, you hear so many stories, you read a lot of stuff on the internet, and, and so many stories about wrestlers and the gossip and the blah, 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 but basically at heart, we're all the same people. We love to entertain. We, we love our fans. We do what we do because we have a passion for it. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, you asked that question, but I, I, I just had to, to tell that little story to kind of tell you what it's all about. It's, it was, it's horrible to, to lose, even if you're not in the wrestling business. Say you work at Walmart. You go there every day. You brought your buddy Mark. You know, your, your, your girlfriend on the cash register. You see each other every morning, and tell, good, tell goodbye every night, and, and you know each other, and you visit each other. You know that you've seen their kids' pictures. You've been to their houses, you know. It, whatever occupation that you have, you have these friends that are very important to you. And it's the same way in our business. Uh, since this is, you know, this is a shoot interview, we, I, and I'm, I'm very, very old school, and I have hard times breaking away from some of the, K fave stuff, but you know, even though it's a work, even though that we know what the outcome's going to be, you know, we still have that respect for each other. We still have the respect for our fans, giving you the best product that we can give. <clears throat> Sometimes we stray away, and we make mistakes. I say we we all make mistakes, not just me. You know, all the talent, and, and to, even to the creative people that write what you see on television, we all make mistakes, and. Uh, the thing is, you learn from your mistakes, and you move on. You make your product better. You please your fans and keep them coming. Keep the wrestlers happy. Because if the wrestlers are happy, they're going to do a good job. Mm. And if the wrestlers are doing a good job, the fans are having fun. If the wrestlers are having fun, the fans are having fun. I can promise you that. For more information on the Owen Hart Foundation, please check out the great work they do at owenhartfoundation.org. Enjoy the entire three-hour Paul Bear Studio Shoot Interview DVD and dozens of others streaming on our Patreon. For only $6, you can help wrestling legends keep working while enjoying hundreds of hours of content. Please find the link below. Mr. USA Tony Atlas has been podcasting away on new 
full-length Wrestling Insider audio episodes. We're dying to get Tony back into the studio, but for the time being, we're still having fun for your enjoyment on Facebook and YouTube. Tony remains available for personal appearances, custom artwork, even personal phone calls. Who needs a 30-second cameo video when you can have a person-to-person conversation with Tony you'll remember for a lifetime? Links below. Hope you enjoyed this one, fans. Please like, share, and subscribe so we can continue to bring you more great wrestling content. We'll be back next week with another Flashback Friday. Until we speak again, you and yours, be well, stay healthy.